Hi there, fifth graders. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed your day off from school today. Uh, I just wanted to kind of post uh, a really quick video to help with uh, your homework for this week. Uh, the math homework this week is a review uh, from fourth grade, uh, equivalent fractions as a fourth grade standard. Uh, this is just like a nice like refresher to get us ready for our new math unit um, starting tomorrow, uh, which will be Wednesday. Uh, we did cover um, equivalent fractions uh, this uh, on, on Monday and Friday. Um, so this isn't just totally brand new. We did get a quick refresher in class together. Uh, so just uh, a quick reminder that there's two ways that we can determine equivalent fractions. We can use like a little butterfly method, which you see here to the left uh, or to the right, just our basic knowledge of multiplication, <clears throat> excuse me, to uh, determine equivalent fractions. <laughs> Uh, so quick reminder, uh, the butterfly method is where we multiply across the fractions. And if the product uh, is the same, then these fractions are equivalent. Um, if when you multiply across the fractions, they are not the same product, then those no. fractions are not equivalent. Uh, or to the right, uh, which is kind of like a more fifth grade approach to how to determine equivalent fractions, it has the same involvement with multiplication. Uh, so whatever rule applies to the numerator applies to the denominator as well, okay? So I've already talked to um, all 45 of my fifth graders um, about this upcoming unit. They will be most successful um, if they are really practicing their multiplication and division facts fluently every single day. Every single day I have them on reflex, we are practicing, we're really trying to hammer down that fact fluency from third grade. Um, it is such a, an important foundational skill uh, for really almost everything that I teach in fifth grade math. So practicing multiplication, division facts, so family is really like, throw some like random facts at them like while you're cooking dinner, like three times six, 12 times four, just throw some facts at them uh, whenever you have time. Um, would be most beneficial for um, for your kids. Uh, so before I log off and say good luck on your homework, I do want to do a few examples with you, just so you might feel a little bit more confident in what you're doing for your homework this week. Uh, so let's say, for example, you have two fractions. Let's say the first fraction is two-fourths. The next fraction is blank eighths. So the numerator is missing. We don't know the number. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll use our knowledge of multiplication uh, and we'll ask ourselves, okay, if you look at the, de at the denominator, four, what did I multiply to result in our denominator turning into an eight? So again, here's where our fact fluency comes in. Well, I know four times two is eight. So in order to make this an equivalent fraction, the same rule has to apply to the numerator. So we'll say two times two is four. So two fourths and four eighths are equivalent fractions. Uh, now let's say um, a problem you come across involves you needing to divide. Uh, so let's see here. Let's say I have like 12 20 fourths and my, numera my numerator is a three. My other denominator is unknown. So same rules apply to numerators and denominators to make them equivalent. So I'm going to ask myself, all right, well, what rule applies to 12 and 3? Uh, I know that 12 divided by 4 is 3. So if the same rule has to apply to the denominator, I'll ask myself, well, what's 24 divided by 4? And that is 6. Uh, so 12 24ths is equivalent to the fraction three sixths. All right. And my son Connor wanted to join us. Connor, say hi. Hi. <laughs> All right. Let's do one more practice example because like I always say to my kids, practice makes permanent. So let's try another example. Um, I'm just going to pull out a random fraction. Let's say, do, 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 do. let's say five sevenths. And uh, here's our second fraction. I'm going to ask myself, okay, what rule? What rule applies here to my denominators, 7 and 21? Well, if the rule here is 7 times 3 is 21, same rule has to apply to the numerator as well. 
Uh, so five times three is 15. Oh, no. These are equivalent fractions. All right. So hopefully this will help you get set up for your homework uh, for this week. Reminder, there's no school on Friday. So your homework is actually due on Thursday. Do not forget. Last week, a lot of y'all forgot to do your homework. Mm, I forgot. I forgot my homework. Don't forget this week, okay? I'm counting on you. Uh, good luck, guys, and I'll see you in class. Bye. Say bye, guys. Bye. Bye.